Good morning. Um, the presentation I'm going to give you this morning is a talk about our security solutions for 2011. At Samsung TechLink, we pride ourselves on our technology innovation. We ensure that the features we have in our cameras, our recording devices, and our accessories meet the demands and the requirements of our, our customers, yourselves, and more importantly, the end users. During 2011, we will continue to invest in our R&D development and ensure that we advance our technologies for the future. However, we are going to change our emphasis, as you've heard from Mr. Crow and Mr. Lee this morning. We're going to change our emphasis and prioritise on network products. We're going to ensure that these network products have a synergy that allow us to offer solutions for various types of applications, whether they be small, medium or large. So our aim this year is to establish a scalable, reliable and effective security solutions platform that covers all these small, medium and large systems and infrastructural pro projects. We're doing this under the umbrella brand of IPIS. This is to protect you against crime, potential accidents, and look after you in the, the marketplace and home. You've seen this, this slide before, and this is the areas you're going to look at doing and having our solutions business looking after. City surveillance, the military and borders, strategic operational centers like oil refineries and um, water purification sites, airports and ports, intelligent traffic solutions, making sure the traffic flow is improved across our towns and cities. And very importantly, vertical markets, such as financial institutions, healthcare, education, and retail. So how are we going to do this? What have we got to make these solutions work? We have the basic cameras and recorders, IP cameras, whether it be VGA, megapixel, likewise on PGZ domes. We have PZ demos go from 12 times to 43 times on the network side. Thermal cameras, network recorders, encoders, linked in with access control intruder. We also have the solution package, the, the devices that bring all these together. The video walls, the media servers, the switches, the video analytics servers, the hybrid cameras and automated number plate recognition cameras. All tied together through TSM. You're all going to say, what is TSM? Well, TSM is Samsung's Total Security Management Software. What I'm going to do in part of this presentation is explain the features of TSM. Help you understand what is TSM and what is it delivered. Look after the products within this, the system elements. And then finally go through the applications where we have got sites working and where we look for the sites coming through at the same time. So, total security management features. It is scalable, reliable and high performance system. It is a fully distributed resource management structure based on a three-tiered architecture. And I'll come on to that in a bit more detail in a moment. It integrates a diverse security solutions system under a single graphical user interface or GUI. The system will highlight unusual events through video analytics and vehicle detection systems. This provides an efficient alarm handling system where incidents are forwarded to the right level of control and command for them to react to those instances whenever they occur. The system will also offer integration through the common API, Application Programming Interface. So the three-tiered architecture, we have the device tier that has cameras, sensors, and servers. The system tier, that incorporates recording, it incorporates data streaming and the management of the structure itself. And then finally, the user tier, where the user consoles, video walls, and display packages. In a bit more detail then, in the device packaging, you're looking at the analog cameras linked in with Encoders. As Alistair said this morning, there are thousands and millions of analog cameras out there. Customers will be very reluctant to change those. Let's add the encoders and let them to utilize those cameras for the future. IP cameras, automatic number plate recognition cameras, 
video analytics, and other metadata inputs. The system, all this data will be fed into <coughs> the media servers, controlled by the management servers. It will be then displayed on the individual console, and then on the big video wall as well. One size does not fit all. This is why we're designing a three-tiered software solution package. We have the standard, looking after industry, supermarkets, small sites. We have the professional, looking after towns, small cities, larger sites with hundreds of cameras. And finally, the enterprise, a metropolitan multi-site application with up to thousands of cameras. We'll look at these in a little bit more detail. TSM standard, you're having a single operator will control up to 72 live video streams coming through at the same time with a two-dimensional mapping system. Moving on to the professional, it has up to 16 operators going through a single server application. <coughs> with that, you're up to 144 live video streams coming through to the console. <coughs> We've increased the capacity here to have two and three-dimensional mapping structures. It has video wall support, customization support. We had a discussion yesterday with a customer that had a potential application. They needed a specific feature. We can do this within TSM Professional. You also have the option to buy additional analytics experts that cover motion detection, that cover tripwire, that cover AMPR, that covers illegal parking and crowd covering. And then we have the enterprise system. This is unlimited cameras, unlimited operators, and a multi-server, multi-site system. The other additional packages in here is you have network storage, data center support, a truly scalable system. As I said, one size does not fit all. We're providing a three-tiered software structure. A little bit more detailed pictorial to see how it works together. Again, a single user, up to 72 channels supported here. The professional, up to 16 operators viewing 144 live and video channels coming through the service. And finally, the enterprise. It's the reliable, centrally managed, multi-server situation. And what is important here, we also have the ability to have off-site storage of data. So if there's a critical situation and one site goes down, we have the support of the data stored off-site as well at the same time. Let me explain and go through <coughs> the TSM Enterprise a bit more detail, how it works. Again, we're using a three-tier. This time a three-tiered architectural structure. At the bottom, we have the base centers. We then have the intermediate centers, and each intermediate center is allocated a number of base centers to look after. At the top, we have the principal control center that overviews the whole system. They can have ultimate control over every camera and every operator in that system. I will go through this. So the basic control center is the first level of the ministry of control. This is where the supervisor he looks after the operation and the administration of the system, and each operator is allocated a number of cameras for their responsibility. They have three monitors for live, playback, mapping, and vehicle recognition systems. To give you sort of the scenario as we go through, if you imagine London, this is one of the boroughs like Richmond, Twickenham, Putney. This is the base centre. The operators there look after all the cameras around the Putney area. The intermediate centre is the second level of administrative control. Again, the supervisor will look after the operation administration, but here the operators aren't allocated cameras, they're allocated base control centres to look after and manage. And going back to the London scenario, where we have the base centres to look after Putney and Twickenham, this can be South West London, South East London, East London. These are the bigger levels of control. And then we have the principal control centre, where everything is looked after, controlled and managed especially if there are major instances, which I'll come on to in a moment. <coughs> With here, we have five specific operation rooms. And this is an example. 
If they don't have these settings, don't. This is an example which I'll come to later where we're using at the moment. We have a traffic control room, <coughs> event room, major event room, administrative room, and a viewing room. We have this viewing room basically because when you bring VIPs in to have a look, because they all want to have a look, you do not want them interrupting day-to-day -day management of the system. So there's a specific viewing room for these people to come and see. And again, each operator has their three monitors to view and control. I take you back to this slide to help you understand how this will work in reality and how when you have, a, I say, a major incident, things will work very quickly. Unfortunately, in London, a few years ago, we had some bombings on the tube stations. And there was a delay between informing people across the system of what had happened. With this system, it made things a lot easier and a lot simpler. Each base centre, I'd say, looks after, let's say, Putney or Richmond or Twickenham, they will have their own areas of responsibility, their own tube stations, their own bus stations. As soon as a major incident occurs, the principal control centre has the ability very quickly, through predetermined um, controls, for every monitor in all the base centres to switch to all the tube stations in that area. So what makes up TSM? We have control devices, output devices, input devices, analytic devices and transmission devices. And with this part of the presentation, we're going to explain in a little bit more detail for you to understand how we make this work together. Under control, we have media servers, system management servers, video analytics and video display modules. The media server is there to record all video data and also stream video data on demand by the consoles and the users. It's there to record the audio and other data on the system. The video analytics here is different to the on the edge. On the edge with the cameras, it's fantastic. However, you're limited to using one particular analytics at one time. This device, you can do multiple types of analytics on a single video screen. We're looking at the images coming through at 30 frames a second, so you can, on one camera, you can look at line crossing, you can look at motion section, you can look at people counting from that same video screen. The video display module, it determines what images go on the video <coughs> by having predetermined, pre-assigned video screens that can be put up there on a moment's notice. And the most important part there, the system management server. The device that controls it, the device that has the data, who can look at what, when they can look at it. The video wall. You'll see this outside this afternoon. We have a smaller version of it. It looks fantastic. It is for integrated monitoring. It is a block style with 46 inch monitor with a 6.7 mil bezel. It looks fantastic. And the reason why a 6.7 mil bezel is important is yes, you can have lots of images within the one screen. But when you spread one image over three or four monitors, what you don't want is to lose gaps and have people's elbows or detail missing because of the, the differences between the screens. The monitors have embedded RGB matrix, so you can have either a single image or up to 16 images on each monitor, and that's controlled within the monitor. It's easy to configure RS-222 and Ethernet. And it has this scenario settings, like before going back to London situation. You predetermine those images will go up in the right order, the right sequence at the right time. And here's some examples where we have put our video wall into practice. Police stations, exhibitions, military sites, city surveillance, traffic control and oil storage rooms. Real life situations. Input devices. This one talk about network cameras, encoders, decoders, thermal cameras, hybrid day-night cameras, one of my little favourites this year. Automated number plate recognition cameras and the new security guard robots. I put this slide like this because it's one of my pet favourites. Families of products, groups of products. We offer you, our customer, and the end user, a full range of cameras. They look the same, they feel the same, they have the same firmware, the same software in these. If you like a particular feature in a camera, we have the range of styles to suit you. Whether they are analog, whether they are VJ network or megapixel network, we have got the full range in those styles. 
box full of cameras, in, internal domes, vandal domes, flat domes, internal and external PTZs. It's a family of products, and that to me is important. As Alice has said in his presentation, encoders are very important to our business. There's some fantastic analog cameras out there, but people don't want to swap them, they want to utilize those cameras, and they want IP. So we have a range of single, four channel, and 16 channel blade encoders. Each of them, real time. Each input, real time. Each input has its own IP address for easy configuration. Not forgetting, whenever there's an encoder, you need a decoder. This is for all those video walls, all those matrix systems, to be able to convert that IP signal back to analog to view on those big TV screens. Thermal cameras. We've been developing our thermal cameras over three years now. We started with a pure monochrome. Last year we brought out the, the color option. This year, big step forward. The ability to alarm out on temperature fluctuation. So if the camera denotes there has been a change in temperature over a threshold, it will alarm the operator and let them know there is a problem. Whether it be a fire or a cold situation. It doesn't have to be security. We're talking video surveillance here, not just security. Take a supermarket, freezers. They can lose thousands of euros of dollars because a freezer, or a number of freezers, fail. Thermal cameras in the freezers. They know as soon as the freezer fails, the temperature rises, therefore the, the thermal camera will alarm. Alarm on motion detection, alarm on video analytics, alarm on people counting. You imagine looking down a security fence. It's very difficult for the operator to see at night. Thermal camera will pick something up. He's not worried if there's um, people moving around outside the fence. What they're worried about is crossing it. And this will be able to do that. The hybrid. We're quite about this, though I think it's going to be a fab camera. The reason being, it combines thermal and standard daylight camera imaging. Through the image selector, you can have the option of having two monitors, so you have thermal and normal at the same time. Or you can have the option of the overlay. And I think this is very smart, because if you're watching an image during the day with your colour camera, and there's a fire in the building, or a problem in the building, the thermal camera will pick it up, it will arm out and switch the images across so you can see the fact there is a fire in that building during the day. A great step forward. Automated number plate recognition. We can recognise number plates up to 220 kilometres an hour. We're utilising 30 frames a second to do this analysis. We can register, pick up register, unregistered cars, cars with plate number plates, potentially criminal or terrorist vehicles. The camera can also be mounted up to 8 metres high, out of the way of the traffic. The images that you'll get on screen will include a number, the car number for each lane, the speed and direction. The security robot. I don't know if you've all seen it, but I know you've seen it at our IFSEC shows. We showed it in our conference in Tenerife, the SDR1, the security robot. Fantastic device, deployed now in Korea. We have now two new models, cut down versions of the light. But what's great about these, we have the two, we have the SDR2, short range, SDR3, long range. The beauty is the module. Yes, this one has a thermal camera on one side and a low light camera on the other side with a big zoom lens. If it doesn't quite meet your um, application, right, we'll change it. We'll put a different module on the side to meet your application. And this makes them very flexible in the market. And the star, as General Clarkson might say, is superb. It's Samsung Techman's automated robot. Um, we hope to have the model device here, but we couldn't quite get it. It's going straight to America, which is a bit of a shock. But it's an autonomous um, patrol vehicle. You can have pre-planned path patrols, or you can control it yourself. Every grown man's toy fantastic. I've asked for a sample, I haven't got one myself. Okay, moving on. Video analytics. This is the common video analytics. We're going to look at vehicle detection, and again a bit more detail at the vehicle number recognition. As I mentioned on a previous slide, the analytics here can be done multiply on a single video stream. It's a big step up. This camera could look at, after a great, at a particular image, but there was many things going on there 
of which you need to know the different facilities that's, that's happening. So at the same time, we can do adaptive motion, abandoned objects, suspicious vehicles, people covering up cameras with bags that they can't see, um, and object counting at the same time, and that's what's important. And here's some of the examples about object removal. This is taken from real site real applications of which I'll come on to later. People counting, stop detection. Stop detection, again, it's not security, it's video surveillance. Cars break down on the motorway. Their cars break down on the hard shoulder, they need someone out there very quickly to help them, fix them, get them on the way, stop, build up the traffic. We're looking at surveillance and surveillance solutions. The vehicle detection package, and this goes into more detail here. This looks after the, the volume of traffic, the speed of traffic, and the occupancy. And what's important is it can help detect accidents to its algorithm. If there's a rapid increase of volume of traffic in a small space, something has gone on in front of that congestion. It is more likely there's been accident. Therefore, the emergency service can be um, informed, they can get to site, and hopefully deal with the situation um, faster than they have done before. We all know it's like sitting in a traffic jam for two or three hours. It's not friendly. Applications. This is going to talk about how the, these solutions have been put into place and how they can be put in place. Look at independent software vendors. Our standard TSM software, professional and enterprise. It was mentioned earlier today that Independent software vendors are essential to the growth of our solutions business. They are. We are integrating 20 such um, vendors at the moment, three of which are here today. We have Milestone, Marissa's and Griffith. They are displaying their softwares in the corridor. So after lunch, after my roadmap presentation, go and speak to them, go and see their wares, see how their software works. I'm very grateful for them coming today. The, the standard, ed, looking after education solutions. What we have here is the ability to integrate video and access control in the same system. Looking after students, looking after campuses, ensuring that only authorised people can get in, and get around the universities. Theft from university libraries is phenomenal. So let's protect those libraries. So, and especially with tuition fees in the UK going through the roof at the moment, this will help keep those fees down. You know. Transportation. We have technologies within our cameras. The analytics. Line <coughs> you, and you go to a tube station, train station, there's a line on that platform. If you cross it, there's a guard that says, excuse me, move back. The cameras will do that. We'll alarm that function. We have many of our cameras and devices um, pass acceptance for the railway, industry, railway um, applications in the UK and France. We're taking them through vibration testing, they've passed. We have bring out onboard mobile NVR for onboard recording, buses, trains, taxis, trucks. All network products. Retail and exhibition solutions. This is where we're using our technology built into our, MD, our DVRs and NVR to record EPOS transactions. One of the biggest losses of uh, money retailers have is in terms of or they call the, um, the honeymoon uh, transaction, where you might want to be taking a bottle of expensive malt whiskey out, but somebody is utilising a tag for a pack of sweets. This will pick it up, the anomaly in the system. We also have the people counting down, which we have it on uh, next door. What this does, it does count footfall. Again, it's not security, it's surveillance. The marketing partners, it's a huge tool. So people like retail and exhibition holders can work out how much to charge people for specific spots in exhibition halls. They know we've got a thousand people coming through our door today, but we've only got a hundred transactions. What's gone wrong in the store? With the domes, you have the ability to access the data, give some, um, some graph information. You can take it out through CSV files, XML files, to do your own analysis. Building up this solution for retail and exhibitions. Museums and historical sites are appear disappear functions in the analytics. Looking after those historical paintings and artifacts. The entry and exit in our analytics. So people don't cross those um, rope barriers to go into areas that are out of bounds. 
with discrete cameras. You don't want in a, in a lovely museum big speed domes or big dome uh, cameras um, despoiling the architecture. So we have the cameras like the, S, with the SMV um, 5010. It's a flat, discrete dome. Healthcare, very important. This is where we're utilising all three of our major um, technologies. Our video surveillance, our access control and our VDP. The video surveillance looking after the nurses, the healthcare staff and the patients. The access control, limiting people's access to areas of medicine, theatres, wards. And the VDP, using that for making sure the right person goes into the baby unit. Just because you have a tag, we don't know that's the father or mother of that child. Visual verification will help that. Financial security systems, again, ATM interaction. Record the ATM data to cut down on fraud. We have a specific camera we developed for ATMs, and the little one in the middle there. Moving on to TSM Profession, some of the applications we can use there. All storage bases. We have the autonomous robots, and we have thermal cameras, giving two layered cordons for protection of your sites. We have the, the hybrid camera. This is where it's important to have both the the normal video and the thermal camera. The normal video can look out for leaks, oil leaks around the, the, the pipelines. The thermal camera look out for potential fire hazards. Exceptionally important on sites like this. Military facilities and borders, where we use again the autonomous radar robot system for the, the more hazardous areas in which the military have bases, and also look at the, the long range, two, three kilometers now. While on the shorter detection, we have the detector beams, the PTZ domes, looking after the shorter perimeters. Ports and airports, the same idea. Facilities, your power stations. We want to control access to those power stations. We want to make sure that the borders are protected. These are critical infrastructures. You might not see them, but they're out there in the countryside, they're out there hidden in the hills. But any of these go down, your, the cost of living goes up because the oil goes up very quickly, the price. And if you lose electricity, and the lights go out. Move on to the enterprise. This is the border and coastline. Again, using robot systems and other detection mechanisms. And the final one, the city solution. Here, we do have a real life situation, a real life city in Algiers. The city of Algiers Samsung Tech is looking after video surveillance, access control, vehicle detection, number plate recognition. We are looking after the whole TSM enterprise system. And we have a man here today, Mr. Nat, who's the head engineer of that system. Mr. Nat? Yeah. Yep. Let's just come down and have to say a couple of words about the Algiers system. Because it is our TSM working, our TSM in reality. It's not just a dream, it is here today. Mr. Nat? Hello, uh, I'm, my name is JK, so uh, I'm in charge of the uh, software development in, for IP video surveillance. Uh, actually, uh, in shortly, uh, I, I'd like to give you some uh, introduction of the project, which actually we did in Algeria uh, last year. So, that, uh, it's a very important project for us, uh, because uh, we had the opportunity to experience a large scale uh, city surveillance. So the scale of that project uh, is very huge in terms of the, the number of centers, which is 90, and also the tens of thousands of camera installed, and about 300 operators working on this system. It's very huge. And through the, uh, the the experience of that project, we actually developed the, the brand new CNS software called TSM to support the uh, multi-site, multi-user environment. So uh, I think that kind of uh, integrated CNS is very essential technology to support the uh, various uh, IP-based video surveillance. So uh, I wish uh, you have a chance to look around uh, our system afternoon. Okay, thank you.
Just as a quick summary then, as I said at the beginning, our aim in 2011 is to establish a scalable, reliable and effective security solution platform to look after all these small, medium and large pro infrastructural projects. We will achieve this, as Mr Lee mentioned earlier, through increased investment in our network technologies, our network support infrastructure and cooperation with you, our customers and our ISV partners. Thank you very much.